I'm going to show you how to produce music like Dead Mouse in under 10 minutes. Now I recently used these exact same techniques to produce music that has topped the download charts as well as co-producing music that has been Grammy shortlisted. I'm Will from EDM Tips, the online resource for music producers wanting to up their production game and today you're going to learn how to produce like Dead Mouse and fast. We are going to cover music theory, we will cover a bit of sound design, some mixing and I'm going to cram as many tips as I can into this five minutes to get you sounding like Dead Mouse as fast as possible. Now why would you do that? Obviously you don't want to copy Dead Mouse, he's got his own style, but his productions are tight and he has been one of the undisputed world leaders in electronic dance music production for years. So learning some of the techniques that he uses is only going to help you up your production game. Thanks for subscribing and sharing and you can download some free gifts below this video. If you want to get the samples I've used in this video, you can also get those for free in the links below. Now I go through this Dead Mouse production process in Ableton Live, but you can follow along in any DAW. These techniques are fundamental and can be applied anywhere. So without further ado, let's hop into Ableton Live and get it done. Okay, so the first step is to write these lovely lush Dead Mouse style chords and I'll show you how to make the pluck sound in a minute but first let's get the chords down and you could do this in any instrument and I'm going to write this in the key of F major so I'll draw in every note in the scale of F major and if you need help with this I'll link to a blog post below that's going to teach you a bit more about scales. Those notes there are the scale of F major. So what I'm going to do is just put them to one side, press fold in Ableton, and now any notes I hit here are going to be in the key of F major. So let's write out our dead mouse rhythm. Just pluck, 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 pluck. And first we're going to write the bass notes. So choose bass notes that you want. It's really easy using this template technique. Very simple bass line. Okay, now to build the chords from that. So all we do is skip one note in this template each time. Skip a note, skip a note. We'll do that with all of those. And some of them might sound a bit funny, but when you've done that, you can then press unfold and by moving the third, which is the kind of second note up in each chord, you can change them from major to minor just by moving them up or down one semitone. So let's have a listen. So that last note sounds funny, so I'm just going to grab the third, move it up and make it a major. To make those lovely lush kind of jazzy seventh chords, you can press fold again, grab the top notes and just count up two more notes. Nice. And we will do that for the other two chords as well. Now to make these chords interesting, let's do some inversions. So you can just grab some of the notes and holding shift and then pressing down, it will move them down an octave. This is an Ableton. And that just brings all the notes a bit closer together. And here's one I made earlier. Oh, that is dead mouse as f Okay, how do we make this pluck sound? Let's open up our silence and I will show you. It's very simple. And all it is is some saw waves layered up with uh, a bit of decay, very short sustain, very short release, and then some filter envelope. So that's with no filter envelope. And a bit of filter envelope with a short decay gives us that pluck sound. Now I've added some reverb on the aux channels and I will show you that in a minute. So that's how we've got our dead mouse chords. Now what else I've done is I've also assigned some of these controls to this macro in Ableton by pressing map and then assigning them there. And that is just assigning it to the filter cutoff, the amp release, the amp sustain on all of the saw waves. So. so I can use that one knob and then it just controls all of the sounds that I want. And then I've stuck an LFO tool on, which is like a sidechain compression effect. So it gives room for the kick to come through. Job done. I'll cover this processing chain a little bit later. 
Okay, next is the bass. All we do is copy those bottom notes here from our chords, those ones, those ones, and those ones, paste them into a new instance of silence and choose a nice big fat bassy sound. And this is made in a similar way from the chords, really short decay, short sustain, short release, a bit of drive to give it some warmth, and then the cutoff down quite far, the low pass filter. And I've also duplicated that and made a sub bass using just an operator just so I've got more control over the sub bass and I can make this mid bass nice and wide. So together and with the chords, let's stick the LFO tool on here as well. And I've added this bark of dog just to boost the bass frequencies a bit. Okay, onto the drums. So I've loaded up a bunch of samples from a Cymatics free house pack. Um, I've put the link to that below this video. First, we've got the kick. Easy, just programmed in standard. Bit of EQ to boost the bottom end. Bark of dog, add some lower harmonics. And then an, another LFO tool just to cut off the end of the kick so it doesn't last too long. Okay, now to the beats. So most of these are Cymatics samples. That I just got for free. So I've got two claps, one of them hitting slightly before you'd expect to give it a human feel. Reverse clap, couple of hi hats, double clap there at the end of the bar. And I've routed the aux channels from the drum rack to my aux channels in my main mixer so I can actually apply different amounts of reverb to each separate drum. And if you look, it's actually hitting on my main aux channels. I cut up one of the Cymatics loops in this house pack just to make a little shuffle. And an extra hat. Very subtle. Now the quality of Demhouse's productions start with just choosing or making really good sounds. So if you've got rubbish sounds at the start, you're gonna come out with a rubbish result at the end. So choosing the right sounds is super important. So just take the time to do it well. And we've got a little drum intro at the end. And then I've added a loop as well. That is mine from somewhere like a housey loop. So let's listen to all our drums together with the bass and the chords. I'm losing myself tonight. Now I've added some vocals and I've just dropped in a stem I got from, I think it was from Splice. I changed it so the tempo was matching my song. I added some harmonies. I did these manually by changing the transpose together. I bust them together into a group so I could add some processing. Again, I'm gonna walk through that in a few seconds. So let's go through the processing. Now another really important factor regarding Dead Mouse's big fat but tight sound is the processing, all the processing he does. So that makes that is really important. So we've already got some processing on the kick. On the drums, I've added some glue compressor and then this thing called a radiator by Sound Toys, which I'll show you. So the drums without the compressor is like this. So you can see we've got about up to five decibels gain reduction there. And the radiator is just adding some saturation, which fills out the harmonics really. So shuffle, just got an LFO tool on that, ducking it out in time with the kick. Intro drums, as you see, I've already put uh, reverb on there, just using the Valhalla room there. For my loop that I made, just a bit of EQ. Take out the low end. Okay, so now processing the bass, all I've done here is add that bark of dog and the LFO tool. 
And then what I've done is I bust the bass and all the drums to this bus here by just selecting audio to D and B bus, drum and bass bus. That's what I like to call it. And here's where some magic happens. So I've got another glue compressor, which just sticks that kick and the bass together so well. And then all the drums fit in there too. So without and with, and then this Omega transformer. Again, it's another saturator, so it just kind of brings up the high end and adds some more harmonics. Okay, the chords, what processing have I done here? I've added a saturator, just the Ableton Live basic one. Added some reverb. Added a bit of EQ, take out the sub frequencies. And a LFO tool to duck it in time with the kick. And that is it. Okay, so now it's on to the extras. So we've got this high riff. And all that is, is a Serum preset. I haven't even tweaked it, just loaded up this preset. I think it came with it. And then added a bit more reverb. And then I've sent via an auxiliary channel out to this crystallizer thing, which is an awesome Sound Toys plugin. Just does loads of crazy reverby delay stuff. And in terms of processing the Vox, all I've done is I've added one of these Omega things again. Just to beef it up a bit. Taking out the sub frequencies. Got the LFO tool ducking it very slightly. In time with the kick. And with the send controls, I've just sent both the main Vox and the harmonies to this reverb in the AUX channel. And I've added a bit of delay as well on another AUX channel. And for this build up, I've just automated my macro. And I've automated a bit of reverb and a bit of utility just to make the impact bigger. And the only other two things I've added is this up sweep, standard, and then this jet sound I made years ago, but I love it for the impact. And all together, this is what we have. out my loop at this bit and then I bring it in here just to add a bit more groove and the main things to remember are composition so getting the right chords down to sound design so getting free samples is a great idea as long as they're high quality and the last thing to really get that dead mouse sound is paying special attention to all the processing that comes after you've programmed in all your elements so there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again for subscribing and sharing this with your friends. And don't forget to download the free gift and check out the free samples in the links below this video. Until next time, cheers and happy producing.